If baseball is a national pastime, it's also a field of dreams and barriers, even for the most talented players. In the major leagues, it certainly goes for many Jewish players, and that history plays a role in the accomplishment of Jewish professional ball players from the United States who took to the field in world competition as Team Israel. You can learn about it in the film Heading Home. And from our guest, a member of last year's team, who's also pitched for the Oakland A's, we'd like to welcome Jeremy Bleich. Thank you much for being with us, Jeremy. Thank you so much for having me. Jeremy, for people um, who are mostly, you know, major league ball players or fans here, uh, wh what is this world competition uh, that we're talking about? Basically, every four years, uh, the Major League Baseball puts on a World Baseball Classic. So they take uh, the top 16 teams through different variations of qualification, uh, and they put on a big Olympic-like tournament, I guess you could say. So uh, last year was the, the second or maybe third, I believe, um, and, and Israel, Team Israel uh, qualified. Well, there, there are other countries mm -hmm. around the world that, as we well know here right in Boston, have you know, great baseball talent. But Israel, uh, what about that, at least before you guys took the field? Sure. So um, the actual governing law to be on a national team for the World Baseball Classic was to be eligible for citizenship in that country. So there were, uh, that expanded to allow uh, Jewish Americans to play for the team because as a Jewish American, you were eligible for um, citizenship in, the, in, in Israel. So Jewish. that's why so no uh, a bunch of Americans were allowed to play. Well, this is a team that be, be, before you were on it uh, had some struggles. Uh, so what brought all of these players together all at once? I think uh, several players had played uh, a few years back in the previous World Baseball Classic, and I think uh, they were in the final game, and they they lost to Spain, I believe. And I think it the, for those group of guys, it left a sour taste in their mouth. And I think as the years went on, the next four years, they were able to gather more players. Uh, the word got out, and as more players with more of a track record at that point began to commit to play, I think it attracted even more guys. So it was kind of like a domino effect. And then we found ourselves um, ready to go for the qualifier. You know, in, in the big picture, uh, baseball is a story of assimilation for all kinds of people. But I guess sometimes there's a need to project individual identity. And one of the things we forget in 1965, when I was a kid, we didn't even know Jewish people played baseball until it was Yom Kippur in 1965. That's right. Uh, you know, everybody has a different, uh, even if people share a religion, they have a different form of maybe expressing that or whatever it may be. And I think um, it brought us all together, right? I played baseball, now, professional baseball now for over 10 years. And you walk into a new clubhouse and there's, you know, those conversations where you get to know people. You don't know where to start. You don't know what to ask. But I think being in Jewish, we walked in the clubhouse together and there was already a foundation laid for us. We didn't have to ask those exterior questions. We were able to get right down to playing. We shared a common bond right from, from the beginning. Of course, you, your next transition is you go to Israel, which is just another country somewhere in the world. What was that like? Unbelievable experience. Uh, it was my second time going, but it was, uh, it was a special trip. Um, we flew over there um, on a very nice plane. We, we were amongst a group that, uh, you know, we were all kind of in, the, in it together. And we were able to experience different parts of the country, whether it's Dead Sea, hiking Mount Masada. We got to do all the, the, the incredible things in Israel together. And it was uh, ate great food and just got to see it all. What about the, the reaction of people there? Uh, what was that like? The reception of us? Yes. Um, I think people ask questions. You know, I think there, you walk around in any country, there's groups of people getting tours of, of, uh, of the surroundings. But I don't, I don't think there were any specific reactions. I think a few people asks, asked, you know, hey, what's that hat, or why is, where, what's, where do I get that baseball hat, or whatever maybe, but it was no, no specific reaction. Uh, of course, I guess another thing uh, going on here is how you feel when you take the field and you're playing a team from another country and, and you have this identification, I guess, you know, with Israel. What, what does that mean to you? I think, you know, the answer to that is multi-leveled, right? Uh, you know, I think if you look internationally, Israel has been a country that's been in a lot of uh, news, good and bad, you know, in terms of some of the stuff going on across the world. But I, you know, I think that was something that we realized. We had a bit of a target on us, right? There, with wearing that jersey came a lot of questions. And I think whenever anyone asks those questions, good or bad, as a group, 
you naturally come together. You, the, it forms a bond where, hey, there's strength here, there's inner strength. And I think in the end it provided us some, some um, motivation and, and some underlying strength to, to perform and do some damage in the tournament. This is being the news. We're talking with Jeremy Bleich from Team Israel about heading home. Uh, Jeremy, uh, you are like many players who struggle through uh, minor leagues for many, many years, and you had a short term in the majors. And I always read those stories thinking these people, they really love the game. Uh, what about you? I love the game. I, I've spent many years playing, as, as you mentioned. For me, it's been, a, it's been an up and down journey. I was a high round draft pick out of Stanford. Um, had a, a large injury setback, and I think at that point you start to question, hey, what am I doing here? W what's my ultimate goal? What am I trying to achieve? For me, it was I got knocked down, and I was not going to accept no for an answer, and I kept on going and, and finally got to the big leagues last year. I've got to meet a lot of incredible people, maintain and build a lot of relationships within the game, and because of my story, I feel like it's my privilege to be able to maybe help younger players or guide younger players that maybe don't have guidance, maybe like I felt when I was young and injured. So I think once you get into it, there's no better feeling than being successful on the field. Sure, the travel and the grind and the dealing with failure is difficult, but and things that are difficult and you can be successful with them, it's very fulfilling. I, I imagine the thrill of suiting up to play in a major league game for the first time, but uh, you had that. How does that compare to what you experienced with Team Israel? I think um, in, for Team Israel, it was, at that point, it was one of the best experiences of my baseball career. I hadn't yet pitched in the big leagues. So for me, it was a very team-like atmosphere. Um, it was, you know, we were in a very unfamiliar place across, across the world, a uh, place I'd never been to. Comparatively, my big league uh, debut was special, very much special on its own. You know, I was in the Bay Area where I went to school. Um, a lot of the guys I had been in spring training with, but still very new surroundings, right? A lot of new teammates, a lot of new faces. Uh, Team Israel was not like that. We should mention uh, people who are interested, this film's going to be debuting pretty soon. Was it December 14th? Exactly. At the West Newton Cinema? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. From Team Israel, Jeremy Bleich.